Okay, I think I'm live. Hi everyone. Today we're going live to show the Zuppa Toscana soup that everybody's been making over the last week, which was our superhero recipe from our new ebook called Super Tasty. I have got a few things ready, but I've just done it in five minutes. So I found ingredients that I haven't got in the house. And we're going to show you how you can just quickly whip it up with what you've got as well. One of the other recipes I'm going to show you today is something that I made for the photography. That was just a very simple hack of a toasted soldier, you know, that you dip in eggs or use for croutons and stuff like that. Um, we absolutely love them. I can see that there's going to be a lot of fun making them in lots of different ways and that as well too. But let's get into it. I have printed off the recipe here for myself. Uh, for those of you who don't have the ebook, you can write them down because I will tell you what the measures are um, and the substitutes that I'm using today because I found that I didn't have an onion, say for instance. Um, the only thing that I have done ahead of time is I have cooked my bacon and my sausage. I did this because I didn't want to do it on the, um, what do you call them, portable stovetop right here. Um, oh, and I'm just going to see that I can see you guys on here. Let me just have a quick look. Awesome. Okay, so I can see any questions. Hi, Linda. Hi, Dave. Um, so yeah, I've cooked the sausage and I've cooked the bacon in the pan because I just didn't want the fat to splatter all over here while we were uh, live today. And if you can't hear me very well, just check on your Facebook uh, app or on your device and turn the volume up. I've got a little microphone on me today, so I should be coming through loud and clear, even over any cooking noises. One of the questions I've already seen a lot of people asking about is the Italian sausage. Now, it can be any kind of sausage that you love yourself. Uh, the Italian sausages, of course, because it's a Zuppa Toscana, it's an Italian uh, soup. But I am using today pork sausage as a farmhouse style one that is from Coles. These ones, I mean, I know like most sausages, they say they're gluten free, which is they are, um, but they have tapioca starches or potato starches, rice flour starches. This one does actually have 3.4 grams of carbs per 100 grams, which is usually 100 grams is one sausage, okay? So that's a guide that I go by. Uh, and this one does actually have rice flour as it's um, thickener. So they're a tasty sausage too. They're by somebody that was in some cooking show, Dan and Steph. Um, you might know which cooking show that is because I don't watch any of them. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got the sausage and we've got the bacon already cooked and that's just going to sit aside and that's just come off the pan. Now what I did with the fat, um, it was cooked in a bit of butter, is I've put it, I'm going to cook it in the Thermomix today just so that we can do other things and it's simple and easy and I'm not watching, well, you're not watching a pot boil as well. So I've poured off the fat from the sausages into the Thermomix. So if you were doing this just in your pot, you would do it in a large Dutch oven or in a soup pot or in a large um, soup pan. Now I was lucky enough to receive these ones from Ninja and this pan is my favorite pan. You can see even today I've been making other things in the pan. Um, but this could even be done, used for a soup in that too. So if you've got a, a wider, thicker base um, or sides of a frying pan or skillet, you can use one of those as well too. Okay, so let's get this in. Because I was rushing, I had no time to pre-chop anything, but you know, like if you were going to, you know, cut your onions or whatever, I've just got, I had no onion. So I am just using some eschalots, purple shallot, golden shallot, depends on what you call it. You could chop to go into the Thermomix um, or into your pot, but Thermomixes have a chopping function, so we can just chuck it all in there without having to chop the whole lot. As always, I always use, I'm not sponsored by them in any way, I just love their products, um, Gourmet Gardens garlic paste. So for those of you who don't have any of my books or anything like that you'll often see and I've given you recipes on how to make your own but you'll often see that I refer to garlic paste or ginger paste I find these so versatile and so amazing in the in the supermarket in your fridge because you've always got garlic ginger lemongrass chili or whatever on hand in a tube that's fresh that 
tastes just like the real thing because it is um, and they don't go off well not in my time anyway this one has a best before in June I literally go through one of these with the amount of cooking I do um, probably one of these big ones every week to two um, when I'm cooking if I'm not cooking nothing in the fridge goes anywhere it just stays there because <laughs> I do have days where I days on end where I don't cook anything at all um, but yeah great product so I pop that in there but of course you can use fresh garlic you can use a confit garlic um, garlic powder if you prefer I'm just going to give that one a quick chop whoopsie sorry my finger was wet just going to give that a quick chop the three seconds speed five I don't think I've got a scraper so I'm just going to grab one out of my drawer and I'm going to scrape down the sides and then I think that one's just cooked um, just as is. So then we're going to saute that one. So if you're doing this in your pan, you're just popping that into the fat. You remove the bacon and the sausage from the pan or your Dutch oven. Pop in um, the, I'm just going to pop that on for three minutes and I'll tell you. I, then you'd remove the garlic and sausage, and the garlic and sausage, the sausage and bacon and add the onion and garlic um, to the fat from the sausages and that as well too. If any, any of the recipes throughout the ebook uh, that you find that there's not enough fat come from the meat when you're cooking it, you can add extra oil or butter to saute any onions, leeks or vegetables, okay? We've pared it back and pulled back on some of the fats in a lot of the recipes because um, some of the, like say if I use mint, say Swedish meatballs, I use an 80-20 um, you know, beef mince to fat. So it's quite fatty when it cooks, so you've got that extra fat there. So not necessary, but if you want to pop it in there for flavour and that as well too, or you're dairy free and you don't want to use the butter, you can use the oil or vice versa. So, you know, nothing's wrong, to be honest. Um, so that one's on for three minutes. So then what we're going to do is we're going to be popping in 400 grams of cauliflower. So if anyone doesn't have the recipe, we used, um, is it 500? Yep. I did 500 grams of sausages, mainly because most sausages in packets are sold in 500 gram lots. Don't prove me wrong. I'm pretty sure this is a 500 gram packet. Yeah, I think so. It doesn't say it anywhere that I can see. <laughs> but I am pretty sure it's a 500 gram packet. Uh, or you get a kilo of sausages, use half of it. Okay, you can use more, you can use less, whatever's up to you. Same with the bacon, you can use it, you can leave it out. Um, and I've added 200 grams of bacon, one medium onion, which I've done it, I've given you the grams because onions are hard to tell what's your medium versus my medium. We've done it over 80 grams, okay, so that could be like a small onion size. One teaspoon of garlic paste, so one to two garlic cloves. Remember, garlic does contain carbs. It's a below the ground vegetable. Um, we've got the cauliflower, which is 400 grams. Uh, I was lucky enough to get these ones for $7.50 <laughs> this week. Um, but yeah, the cauliflower can be expensive. But I did buy half a kilo in Woolies the other day in the freezer. And... I think they were $2.40 for 500 grams for a frozen bag. We've used it in the soups. If you use frozen cauliflower, we found it made the soup just that little bit waterier, um, but you can reduce it. And if you leave it overnight, it thickens as well. Significantly, no, oh, not significantly, no significant difference, um, to be honest. So we did some where I mainly used the fresh stuff because I wanted the soup say to be really white in the image. Um, but other than that, we tossed up because cauliflowers were nine dollars when we were photographing it, that we used the frozen ones and that as well too. And Linda Waters, who's our head tester, and that had frozen cauliflower rice and stuff like that when we were all starting out. So we had lots of different ones. Okay, so we can see that this has turned into a lovely goldeny. Uh, opaque onion <laughs> mix and now we can add our vegetables so we add the cauliflower chili flakes if you're using them again if you don't like chili flakes you can leave them out you can add a little bit you can add extra pepper um, you can add a little bit of sumac or paprika 
Simac would be good because it's got that little bit of a lemon flavor in it. You could add a little bit of Italian herbs if you like. I find the chili flakes are super mild. I honestly, I don't even taste them, but mind you, I did grow up on a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Chilies in my time. So I'm just chucking in 400 grams. If you're using your Thermomix, you can weigh into your scales. I already just quickly weighed this. This amount was 450 grams. It was like near enough, close enough to me. Um, and again, if you're going to make this soup and you didn't want to use the cream or any dairy, you could add extra cauliflower. Obviously, it thickens and makes a creamy soup. Um, remembering again, cauliflower adds up. The bulk of the carbs in this recipe is actually the cauliflower. Um, so, sorry, what are we adding? The chili flakes. In she goes. And the chicken stock. So, I don't have any chicken stock. So, that's three cups of chicken stock. I've just got some water, which I'm chucking in. Now, in the front of the book, I added um, a link to Urban Forager. Um, I was sent these, oh, I don't know, six months ago, and I've used, like, the original ones, and I've used them in a lot of recipes, and uh, to be honest, I love them. Like, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I love this product, and it's a small Australian business, so I'm very happy to... Um, continue using the paste um hang on sorry i'm just grabbing a teaspoon i can't see a teaspoon or half a tablespoon here so when i do three teaspoons it'll be two plus one um but yeah i love their paste so i've used up all the chicken one i've nearly out of beef this one's a vegetarian one and there's also an umami one which is made with miso a mushroom which is divine i used it in a beef dish which sounds really weird that i'd use a vegan stock paste but it was like incredible so when i do use stock paste whether i've made my own or um or i'm using a purchased one you'll see that i actually just stuck in two half tablespoons which is two teaspoons for each well there's four teaspoons in a tablespoon if you didn't know that um so i just put in four teaspoons worth for three cups of water now this one is based on one teaspoon per cup but I add the extra for extra flavor. I do it all the time. I don't find these overly salty. Uh, for those of you who have made, say, stock paste in your Thermomix in the past and you put in all of that salt, that's a preservative. Um, it obviously is also a flavor, but I never, <laughs> since I've had my machines in five, six, seven years, I don't know um, how long I've had the TM5 for, but I got that one when it came out. So it might be seven years. Um, I never put in all the salt ever, but, and then I flavor things myself because I found some things overly salty. So I always just add a bit extra, but that's just me. So I've added in the chili flakes, the cauliflower and the chicken stock. And now I'm gonna just cook that one for 10 minutes, probably at hundred degrees, speed two. This is like a super simple soup. Oh my God, it's like so good. So some people said like, oh, you know, is, is this like the best soup in the, in the book? We did pick it for a reason for Superhero. I will say like when I tested it for me, it was one of those soups that the whole family will love. Um, men and women, you know, young children, teenagers and that as well. It's just got really good flavor. It doesn't taste like cauliflower at all. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am, was sorry i can't say am i was not a cauliflower fan at all until very recently and it's more through recipes like say my collie mac and cheese if you haven't tried that that's another amazing recipe and it's on the website um i like to use it for a thickener and a background but i put flavor profiles with it so that you don't get that funky smell or that aftertaste of cauliflower because that was what really turned me off with cauliflower uh, now it doesn't bother me so much, but I still make the recipes the way I want to use it as a thickener, as that sort of potato starch replacement, even though it's not starch at all, um, in soups or casseroles and stuff like that. And yeah, it just gives it the right consistency. Um, yeah, a colour. It's not so much flavour, I guess, because I whack on those spices and stuff like that over it. But yeah, really good. Let's see if anyone's saying anything. Um, what was the name of the stock paste? Okay, the stock paste is Urban Forager. 
So if you've got the ebook, Shane, it's got a link directly to them, or you can look them up on Google. Because like I said, I'm not affiliated, so it's just a direct link to their site. And that should give you a list of stockists. So um, I know, Shane, you live kind of local to me, so maybe look around. I don't know. I thought they might have been up the road, and I've tried to get, I've asked Elite to get them in, um, because I really do love them. And I'm going to make, <laughs> like, I'm going to just have them in my fridge all the time. They're, like, it's even like garlic paste. Like, I could, I've got a Thermomix. I can make garlic paste myself. But the thing is, is them sourcing garlic. And garlic, as we know, is very expensive. I don't grow it anymore. I used to. Then mixing it all up and putting it into, you know, I've got, like, the little yogurt tubies or whatever and stuff. I, I, because of what I do, I don't have, <laughs> sounds funny, I don't have time to do all of those sort of things. So I love these. Um, I have asked them if they will do a bacon one. Um, we, I did put a few tips in the book about bacon stock. Uh, I will make a bacon stock for the website. I, I'll make some stock paste for the website too for those who like to make their own things. Um, but I think it was Continental used to make a bacon stock cube uh, many years ago and Dave and I probably bought every one of them <laughs> um, because the tomato and orange soup that's in the book we you originally made that on a chicken stock which sounds weird because again it's a vegetarian vegan soup actually if you used oil and veg, uh, vegan stock but um, we used to use a bacon stock and it gave that really nice smoky flavor so I've got my bacon bones left over from making all these soups and I'm going to make some bacon stock for us as well, um, bacon stock paste with all the leftover veggies and stuff like that, which is just amazing. But yeah, Urban Forager. So Aussie business, um, they're not bone broth, so they've actually got like the extra vegetables. But even this one here, it's only 0.2 grams of carbs per serve, per 100 for those who go by per 100 mil, 0.1. So, I mean, that's point when it's made up with water. Um, but yeah, you're looking at not even a gram of carbs for four cups of stock and that. So yeah, great product. Um, and so yeah, I put that in there. But you can use, in saying that, I did say the book is all supermarket. You can use, we also did test with um, the continental little punnet ones, the little ones that you add water to, the pods. I think that's what they're called. Uh, we also test with stock powders and stock cubes. Look at a lot of the stock powders, you'll find that a lot of them got a lot of thickeners in them and they're actually quite carby. Um, they won't really make much of a difference in a soup, but they're there and there is probably some additives that some people won't like. Okay, so um, yeah, so things like this and there's Grevity, which is another brand. Uh, I think there's a bone broth base in that as well too. Or you can make your own. Okay, um, so yeah, that's going to cook for 10 minutes. So let's have a look at these toasties that I made. I am going to plug that in. Hopefully I won't burn myself while I'm doing this. Because I really don't know how to use this. Okay, that's plugged in, okay. On, we're going to put it on. Hmm, how do I do that? Right. Hmm, just trying to work this out, sorry. I thought I knew it. Oh, here we go. We'll try it on medium first. I've got my pan. So this pan just had the um, bacon and sausage in it. So that's no biggie. But what I've got is um, I've sliced up some of the low-carb bread. So I, I baked one, this one today. Um, for anyone who bakes the bread, I have been making mine lately without the... Uh, golden flax meal because I haven't had any. I bought in bulk 20 kilos a few years ago and they're all finally gone and I'm out. Um, so if mine looks a little bit different, that's the reason why. I can just grab a knife somewhere. Mm, maybe not. Is that okay? Oh, I did. Get to here. So, for anyone that. That's my loaf. Um, cutting them in higher. Okay, so sizes, I use the 24 uh, centimetre long pan. You can turn it on the side if you've got like a big top, if you're using a smaller pan too. Okay, so I've done this, but I'm not going to use that one. I've got some here. 
So I'm just going to show you how to slice up one chunk. So I'm cutting them thick. This was on a higher loaf. Um, and I've cut them into random sizes. And I'll just show you with this one, if you can see. Let's move things out of the way. I was just watching a video the other day and I'm like, notice I had bags in front of it the whole time. Okay, so I'm going to cut across four for this one. These two, I think, let's cut them into cubes. Because these ones, you're going to dunk them into the soup. Really nice, crispy, cheesy soldiers, okay? If you're going to use these for eggs, you could cut them thinner. If you do this one, see, it's like, oh, soggy. And that's just like too big. So you just cut it in half like that and in half like that. You could do them bigger, smaller, whatever. Okay, I'm getting some heat in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck them into the pan. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray them. It might always seem weird spraying something onto food, but it's extra virgin olive oil. So um, for those of you who don't know, what I... You know, worked in restaurants and cafes and stuff like that for more than a decade. We used to cook schnitzels, chicken schnitzels on a toasted sandwich maker with spray on oil. No deep frying. We never deep fried anything in seven years that I was there. That was one place that I worked anyway. But it was interesting. Smallest kitchen ever. So if you ever wonder why I can handle myself in here, it's because I worked for years in a kitchen like no joke. You, every time you pass somebody, you are up close and personal. So I'm turning these around and I'm just keep making sure that they're coated nicely in this oil, okay? Because I want, you could add butter or whatever if you wanted to, um, or just oil to the pan. I just, it, like I said, for me on the day, it was honestly, it was just a, I'm going to do this. And then as I started to toast up, I'm like, huh, I'm going to do this. So, funnily enough, looking at this, we could do this as garlic bread toasties and that as well too. You could throw some garlic in there. But when you see what I'm going to do with them, you're going to be, you're going to be happy to make these at home. Okay, so our soup is nearly done. When it's finished, um, oh, I was supposed to put like the simmering basket in place, but I think that'll be fine. Uh, so when it's done, then I'm going to puree the soup and then I'm going to add the cream, the parmesan, the sausage and bacon and cook for another 15 minutes. So these ones, oh, I better watch this because I'm using a portable stove top. Uh, you know, I really don't know. But anyway, so what we're trying to do here is we're toasting the bread in the pan, right? So you could do this on an oven tray as well. So it could be like just a sheet pan thing that you might want to do. I'm going to do some like little videos of these. I think they'll like, you know, be a happy little thing for um, my Instagram or something. <laughs> so they're just starting to go golden. I know you can't see. It'd be really good if I could have like a camera up here and you could just be like seeing me from every angle because like, you know, like telly or something, but you can't. Let me just have a quick look at questions. Oh, hang on. No. We'll do this one first. Okay. So that should all be good. Um, I am just going to puree that. What do we say? One minute. So with the puree speeds for these, I'm just going to take that lid off for a bit. Um, with the puree speeds for these, uh, sorry, not the speed, the time, you'll find, like, and not just this soup, you'll find some of them, because um, like our test is like, oh, it's done at 30 seconds. I want you to puree it for a minute or more because we want the soup to be really silky. No bits in it. Um, unless you want it that way. And, but what it does is it just makes it really foamy and really voluminous and just delicious. Uh, say the celery soup, for instance, that's one of those ones that it's just like you, if you took that out 30 seconds or so, you'd be like, oh, you know, it's nice. <laughs> if you take it that extra time, it just comes up so damn good. Okay, I'm just gonna turn these over. Making sure that we're toasting on all sides, okay? Um, and then I'll just turn that puree on. Just don't want to burn any toasties. So with these, if you'd like, um, make all our seasonings, like ranch ones would be nice. Uh, the Italian spice would be nice. Italian herbs and garlic would be lovely. Um, Move that one over to there. I don't think it's very hot in that part of the pan. 
Okay, so now let those go. Okay, now I'm just going to pop this back on. One minute. Those of you who don't have thermomixes, now you get to see how quickly and easily this is. Um, if you're doing this by your Dutch oven or a stock pot, you're using just one of those stick blenders, like an immersion blender, or just pour it into a blender, always being mindful that you're pureeing hot soup. Make sure my lid's on. We turn it to five. And then we get it up to nine. And it makes a lot of noise. It gets a bit noisy, but what you're hearing is I've also, like I said, I've got a microphone, so it's probably making that a lot louder than it is as well. Let's give it a quick tap when you're taking that off. I always just turn that lid over. You can already see, without me turning it too hard, that it's a beautiful creamy soup. So like I said, if you didn't want to add cream or anything like that to this, you can just stop it there and add in the um, sausage and bacon and you're done. So I'm going to add a cup of thickened cream. I'm adding a quarter of a cup of Parmesan. Now mind you, this is more than a quarter of a cup. I'm not adding it all in. Oh, oh, hang on. Okay. Just gonna take this off for a second. That'll probably just bugger everything up. But anyway, that's just done. Um, just add my Parmesan, not burn my hair on it. My hair's not that long at the moment anyway. Um, and we're gonna add our sausage and bacon. You can reserve some of this if you like, just to pop on the top. Um, it looks pretty that way. And then we're gonna cook that one for 15 minutes. Just keep my hair away from this hot plate. At 100 degrees, yeah? Yeah. Oops. Go away with your upgrade now. I know there's lots of people on that annoying that and it annoys me too. And yes, I've done it on my MacBook. So anyway, still wants to do it. Reverse, we're making sure we engage reverse gear. And then I'm just gonna put that on. Stay two. Okay, that's on. Now that, that's just turned off, I'm going to pop this back on, learn how to do all this again. Put on Seema, that will probably be right. Okay, so this is what I do now. Like These are all hot, like I said, and they're all like toasties. If you're doing this on your own um, gas that you're used to, just do them when they're golden, not to that dark. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to chunk the cheese into the pan. Yeah, and the cheese is gonna stick to the bottom. Now the cheese that I use, and a lot of people do ask me about Mexican cheese, there is two brands. This one's the Perfect Italiano, a Mexican cheese. Um, and there is another one via Coles. I think it's another one that's an Italian brand too. It's in like a clearer bag, doesn't have all the green on it, white, red and black logo, I think, from memory. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually like stick the toasties into this cheese. You know when you eat a toasty and there's always that little bit that oozes out into the pan or on the side of your pan and it's crispy and it's cheesy and it's amazing? Well, this is what this is. So you can see like I'm doing that, but then I'm gonna like toast the cheese into the toast. What I'm also gonna do because I'm going to season it too. 
So I've got like some beautiful salt flakes here. Remember salt flakes aren't as salty as um, fine salt. So and then I'm just going to toss that around. And I'm not kidding, like these are crunchy. They are cheesy, they are salty, and they are freaking amazing. And it's really easy. So as you can imagine, if you've got your soup on your, on your stove top, and you've got a pan beside you, and you're just getting like your croutons or toasties ready, whatever you want, amazing. These could be done into little soldiers and be done with your um, soft dippy eggs in the morning. But they go magical with all of the soups. And it is that easy. So I'm just going to turn that one off. Oh, sorry, I just bashed. That was lucky I didn't pull out the wrong plug, hey. That wouldn't have been good. Um, so yeah, I just serve these with your soup, dunk it in. But like I said, as you can imagine, you could put blue cheese in there for your buffalo chicken soup. You could uh, put the ranch spices in there. You could put Frank's hot sauce in there. You could put Italian herbs. You could make garlic bread this way. There is so many things you could do. One that I was going to do tonight, but like I just ran out of time. You might find out later that I also made another ombre cake as well today. So I've baked three loaves of bread and I've made a new frosting. Oh my God. The best, I reckon it's the best keto frosting there is. I don't know if anyone's ever made it before, but it was like just a little idea in my head because I don't like really sweet, super sweet things. Um, so it's a non-sweetie frosting. But yeah, you'll see I've done a new ombre cake in the pink ones that I said I would. We've got a strawberry uh, white chocolate mud cake in it, a lemon coconut cake in it, and then the vanilla cake. And then there is this new frosting um, that is not super sweet and it's all done in the pinks and that as well. So it's really lovely, but like, I know you can heat up, so you know they're nice and crispy <laughs> and um, cheesy and salty. It's the way a toaster is supposed to be. Oh, look at me, I'm so psyched. I didn't even get any pretty bowls. They're all over there for the soups or anything. So I'm just going to do it. They might be joined like that. You might divide them up or whatever. Or well, just break them up, whatever you want. But these are incredible. If you've got the book, you'll see the ones that I did just on my gas stove so I know it's like the temperature. And, you know, you're more familiar cooking on your stove than a portable one. Um, but yeah, I just did it till they're all like nice and got it. Did it on a low heat so that you're like toasting it through so you want to make that bread really nice and crispy. But even things like this, um, for those of you who uh, don't get the gluten flour, Atkins have a bread. Uh, this is their bread mix that I made today. You can see it's a very seedy bread. Um, I like it flatter than like a sliced bread. That's why when I did some recipes for them, I did the bagels and the uh, fugazi, the, the Italian flatbread. But I thought this would be really nice. And I'm gonna make some like um, deep dish Chicago style pizzas this way. So I did that with the, um, the Atkins mix. I did this one, like I said, in that frying pan that we just had. So this is our low carb bread mix done into that as well. Um, just I oiled the base and I cooked it for an hour. So this is actually cooking the bread without an oven. Okay. Um, again, these cut into toasties to dunk in your soup. Magic. And when you do this, when you make the mix, again, you could add, it's the one I chewed on, um, <laughs> you could add fresh rosemary through this, like, di um, you know, finely chop some fresh rosemary, put a little bit of parmesan or even some gooey cheese through it. Um, 
you know, so like in there, like put some big cubes of gouda or howda, um, emmentale, you know, something nice and cheesy inside there or parmesan. Um, you could just do it with the Italian herbs. You could do it with the ranch seasoning. I always come back to ranch, don't I? Um, so they're a lovely way to do the bread as well. This one, like I said, was done in the 24 centimeter pan um, using the armor meal. I proved the bread in the oven at 40 degrees. So if you have an oven that goes to uh, 40, goes down to 40, not goes up to 40, goes down to 40, you can prove your bread in there. So I did overprove mine, um, but I left all of these breads because I put them in the pans. So this one was like in a baking, like a, in a cake pan. The other one was in a frying pan that I sit on the stove top. And the other one was in the 24 um, by 12 centimeter pan. So this is the pan that I use. I'm pretty sure it's 24, it might be 26 actually. Um, I'll put those measures. I use the USA pans. I never um, have to line them. The breads and that just pop straight out. So that's always good. So what do you think of my toasties? I haven't read anything yet, so let me have a look. Um, oh, everyone seems to be loving it for camping. I don't go camping. I used to. So I wonder if I click on that, can I see all the comments? Here we go. Okay. I'll just have a look through the questions because we've still got six minutes to go. Um, if anyone's got any questions regarding any of the soups in the book too, just pop it on there while I read through these. Um, this I'll just, I mean, I don't think you need a recipe for it, but I'll put one on the website anyway, just for like crunchy crouton, croutons and toasties for people who are looking for that for an idea, the low carb. Uh, the other breads, and like I said, they're just made and reduce the cooking time. But the one on the stovetop, I did cook on low with a lid on and it puffed right up when it proved. I think, I, again, I overproved it because I had them in the oven for two hours or so while I was doing cake because I had to video the cake and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we use spray oil, but like I said, you can use butter, you can use bacon fat. So if you render your bacon fat and keep that on the side, that would be lovely too. Nice bacon and cheese toasties. Um, okay, so loud and clear, everyone can hear me. That was good. $4.50 for a whole collie. Woohoo! We're all coming to wherever you are, Linda. Um, we roast our, our frozen collie at Meals and Wheels um, prior to putting in soups. Dries it out slightly. Okay. So yeah, and you can roast cauliflower for any of these soups and that as well too. It will make it browner. Um, and the only reason, I think I wrote it in one of the notes on one of the recipes, the legendary cauliflower soup. You can roast the cauliflower for that one as well. And you could even season it with a bit of cumin. Um, but I look on it, like I obviously do things, flavor's always number one, but I also consider what it's gonna look like in a picture for myself too. So, um, because what you see in our photos is always what the recipe actually is. I don't alter food. So if you ever read about all those crazy food photographers that use glue and, I don't know, hairspray or whatever, I don't, okay? So I think you can tell I'm not a food photographer as such. I am a food photographer, but you know what I mean. A little bit different. Uh, Collie's $7.40 at Aldi. I got mine $7.50 at Coles. $6.99, $9.50. Um, what was the name of stock paste? We've done that one. Um, we've got the ebook there. Um, this stunk my kitchen out pretty bad when I pulled the leftovers out the other day, but still tasted amazing. So, Peter, was that like just a cauliflower smell? Um, I, I just love this soup. Uh, bacon stock, yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you place a flax seed meal with anything or just a minute? Oh, okay, so if I didn't say that, um, I replace it with almond meal. So on the website, there is our low carb bread. There's also a low carb roll recipe where I use, I think I halved the slim husk and used almond meal, but often I just use the almond meal as well. Um, usually I have a ton of almond meal, but I actually had to go and buy a couple of bags today, uh, yesterday. Um, but yeah, I just use that in, in, instead of. I don't add anything extra to it. And my breads, I don't use the xanthan gum. Like where somebody else had, I think it was just in my comments, someone had written recently that they don't use the xanthan gum because of the texture. The xanthan gum actually adds gluten-like structures in baking. Um, 
But in that bread, I just like it with just as it is. It doesn't need it, in my opinion. So we'll just go with that one. Um, I can get golden linseed from this, so I can get, is it the same? Golden linseed, yes. So golden linseed, golden flaxseed, the brown is bitter. It's still in the same family and it's a stronger flavor, but the golden linseed or flax seeds, they're just the same. They're just called different things, um, different names. And yeah, you can just mill it and turn it into a flour. Uh, yes, I believe it is the same as long as it's golden. <laughs> See, other people are answering and we've, we've done a few of these questions before. Uh, love your recipes. Thanks for being so generous with your keto skills. What bread recipe did you use for your cheese toasty today? Okay, so that was still just the um, low-carb bread. It was the one with the psyllium husk pow um, flour in it because Linda made this one for us for the soup photos last week because uh, I was completely out of gluten flour and then she just put on a low... Like, I asked her and she literally just pulled it out of the oven, which was really funny, and she just used up the last her gluten flour. So I bought us both some recently. Uh, for those of you who make the bread and don't get a big rise, now you'll see this bread here versus the one that, if you saw one that Linda had, had the top like that. I know she uses a smaller pan than I do. I, because I use the larger pan, I have a sneaky feeling that's a 26 centimetre. Yeah. There is somebody here that's always got a tape measure in. <laughs> so it is actually 26 centimetres by 12 and a half. Okay, 25 by 12 and a half they usually are. So um, that's the size pan that I use. Like I said, I use the USA pans. I bought mine from Everton, not sponsored, um, but love this brand pan. I have virtually everything that I cook in in this brand um, because I find everything just pops straight out of it. And for me, when you want a beautiful looking loaf and you can see like it's got the nice grills on it. Yeah, I used to use the holy ones before, the crusty bake ones, but uh, this pans I didn't notice them at first and then when I got them I thought they were amazing um, so you'll see mine doesn't have like the huge top it's because it's in a bigger pan than probably most people are using um, it's the same size pan that I used for the photos that are on the on the website um, but it's the brand of gluten flour that can really excuse me affect your rise um, the original ones that I use Bob's Red Mill gives you a great rise the Lotus Pantry one, which is the green and black branding one, if you've seen that in your local health food stores, is by far the highest rising one. That's the one I've used in this. So you can see even proving that in the oven for two hours, which is more than it should be, but anyway, um, prove it in the oven for two hours and then baked it. It's turned out like perfect rise. Like I've got pictures I think I put on my story today of you'll see it was above the top of the pan when I uh, put it into the oven. And then there is the Abundance brand. It's the one that you buy via a scoop. Um, now, it will give you a slightly denser bread. It will give you a lower rise, but it will give, in my opinion, a tastier bread. Now, it's funny because I've seen people say, oh, my bread turned out dense and I had to throw it out and they had used that flour. For me personally, I think it beats the other ones in flavour. And when we're talking about toasties, it's actually better for toasties in the way that if you've made a toasted cheese sandwich with this bread, I always find the cheese kind of disappears into the bread. Like it doesn't stay really like old school days of having those brevels. Mine were called brevels because it was in a brevel maker. You know, those brevels with the lines on them and you'd bite into it and hot cheese would leak out and burn you on the chin. Um, these ones don't quite do that. But with the Abundance brand, I find it's great for toasties, okay? But... This one, even with the gold flax, you can see like makes amazing little toast soldiers. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Our soup has finished, but we can have a look at that in a minute. Uh, we're doing your creamy leekin and bacon soup tonight. Can't wait to try it. Any tips? You'll love it. I don't think anything with that one, you have to change anything. I just loved everything about it. I think it's one where um, it might still say in one of the instructions something about butter. I originally had butter in the recipe to cook the leeks in, as you would. Um, but when we were testing it, we found that the fat from the bacon, uh, it depends on the fat that's released from whatever meat you're using in the pan. So you can just use that fat to saute the, the leeks in. Um, but if you want to add the butter, you can still add the butter. Uh, of course, it just adds a little extra bit of fat. Um, 
And if it's going to be your only meal of the day, then it might actually help fill you up. But no, beautiful soup. One of my favourites. Um, creamy leek and bacon. And excuse me if I called it potato and bacon because Linda's even written on the container potato and bacon because I just kept calling it potato and bacon the whole time. Now, <laughs> and don't ever think that I eat potatoes because I'm actually one of those very rare people who have been keto for five years and have no desire to go back to eating potatoes or anything like that, okay? so. But yeah, I do call potato salad, potato salad if it's made with cauliflower, whatever. It sounds better than cauliflower salad. Um, thank you. Love watching this live cooking. Awesome. It's funny when I do things like this. I think it's, for me, I'm like, oh, well, everybody's made the damn soup. But I think sometimes when you see things, it makes it a little bit easier and it gives you the opportunity to actually ask me any questions and I can tell you any little tips. But those toasties I thought were worth making. And, of course, you have to watch this. My hands, they have a life of their own, don't they? <laughs> um, just follow the recipe and it would be awesome. Where did you get your pans from online? So Tracy, my pans, like I said, I do, uh, I got all of the USA pans from Everton. Admittedly, I shared the links when they came on sale. You just have to keep an eye on them. I got all of mine at maybe 40% off, I think, max um, in maximum price they're quite an expensive pan but when they're 40% off they're not <laughs> so I bought all the baking trays uh, half sheet cookie pan trays pie tins you know mini loaf tins cupcake tins I've got so many of them obviously for what I do but I will just say that they are amazing I do have another loaf one in it as well and this is the one so if you see, if you've got some of my cookbooks and you've got all the sweet loaves and that, this is the one that I use for that. So it's a smaller in size one. You can see it's higher. So I think you can see there. So this one's like a good two centimetres higher. So you can make like beautiful banana bread or the, say, the um, sticky ginger nut loaf from Keto Loco. It gives you this beautiful narrow um, loaf but then gives you the height as well. So you're not end up with like these low, like I, I cook things and everything, like I've made the, the low carb bread in every pan right up to, um, I've got jumbo ones that are they're actually shaped like that as well. Um, but I found these ones with the nicer shape as well for a loaf. But yeah, for a smaller loaf, like you could split that dough and do two in here as well, um, two different ones. These are just amazing. Like I said, you can put anything in there and it just like pops straight out. Like I said, I'd never, I don't even only just wipe it down with <laughs> paper towel. I don't even wash them. Um, and they've been used a ton of times. And as you can see, it looks still brand new. Um, but this one is actually 23 by 10. Um, and then the height on that one is actually 10 high as well. But yeah, that's great for sweet loaves. Or if you were going to make, say, like, um, I won't say one recipe because there's one recipe I really want to try in here. Uh, just see how it looks. I might do it for Easter. Um, but you know, if you wanted to like say a beautiful red velvet, um, swirl cake or something like that, these like will look amazing as well. So it just gives you that really nice high block. Also great for terrines or ice creams and stuff like that too, to be fancy. But just look up USA pans and just hit the shopping on Google. I'll tell you where to find them the cheapest. Okay. Um, First time watching, thank you for sharing. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay. Oh, I think we're ready to get this out. Have a look at this soup. So, I don't have a ladle here, but we've got one of these little soup ladles anyway. Spoon ladle. Um, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. Not usual that you have a hot plate in the middle of your kitchen bench. But anyway, okay. So I've got this beautiful thick soup now. Um, like I said, I've got uh, no pretty bowls to put it in or anything, but anyway. So you'll see like it's nice and thick, but still soupy. Um, and if you're doing this on a on the hot plate and that 
you can reduce it down however you want. But the Thermomix, um, for those using the Thermomix, it actually turns out really beautiful. You can see I didn't have to put any blade covers in. Some people might ask about like the meatballs or whatever. Um, breaking up with a blade, I put it in reverse. So when there's that volume of liquid, the balls aren't all stuck down the bottom of the jug. So they don't break up and they're already cooked. So they pretty much hold their own, you know, and as we know, sausages, when they're cooked, they've got um, that thickener in them that it binds it all together anyway. So you can see like beautiful thick soup, beautiful meatballs. Now, in saying that with the sausage too, I had somebody ask if um, you finely mince it or you make it into meatballs. I do have notes on the side <laughs> that's in there. Um, and it has a little C notes in the, in the ingredients list. So you can make them, traditionally it's normally like minced -y, like minced -y. that's not a word. Kind of, you mush it up, you know, like when you put it in the pan, mush it up a little bit, break it up. So that it's sort of like when you're making um, Mexican chorizo, you get like nice crispy bits and you get meaty bits and that kind of mix everywhere. And you could still do that. Um, when I was testing this, one of the testers actually make it into the meatballs. And I'm like, oh, I would have done it this way. But then when we went to eat it, I'm like, oh, I really like it like that. So that's why I put the notes in there and didn't say, originally it actually had the whole thing about making your own sort of style chorizo mincy bit um, <laughs> in, in the recipe. So now with that, you can easily, like I said, you use your dunker and you've got perfect vessel to eat the whole soup. And if you like me, when I used to eat soup, because I hated soup, <laughs> I used to eat the bread. When the bread ran out, that's when I stopped eating the soup. <laughs> so for me, I guess this was a natural progression for me to make something tasty that goes in the soup and that as well too. And the thing is, is while I have all these breads here, surprisingly, we are testing some things for different recipes. Um, I don't often cook it. Okay, so if everyone thinks I make a lot of low carb bread and eat it all the time, I don't. I actually rarely eat um, the, I rarely eat gluten um, because it does actually affect me a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I don't mind a bit like this for sure. I'll eat some of those later and over the next couple of days anyway. But anyway, I think that's it for today. If anyone's got any questions, I'll just have a quick look before we go. I hope you've loved it. I hope you're loving the new ebook. Uh, the link is in the uh, post above and Dave's popped it in the thread in a pinned uh, comment as well. So if you want to um, grab the new soup ebook, we have, um, I should say about that, we've got uh, two more spots on the test team um, that you can win for anyone who has purchased the book it, up until the 3rd of April, which is a week. Um, and just go onto our group. We will have an official thread later tonight, um, but I'll be looking at anyone that's just posting pictures and that as well. But it'll just be whoever's bought a book. We'll do a lucky draw. Two people will be lucky enough to join our team. Now they will actually get straight through onto our next cookbook test team. Uh, usually we have, you know, you've got to be in first to get onto whatever books. They'll all go straight through if they want to be part of that book. Um, which will be our next paper book pack, paperback book, and they will also receive that as free. So our cookbooks are quite an intense time. Our testing and that for all that will actually start next month, even though the book is not published until later in the year. We've only just published Keto Mojo, if you didn't know. Um, so we have lots of books that we have to sell <laughs> before we print another one. Um, but that's a lovely little competition. We'll also have some giveaways in that as well with a, um, not who cooked it first, but cook the book. And I just want everyone to go in there and comment and stuff like that, who's cooked and what method, which you'll see that post come up later as well. And, um, and then we'll give away some nice little giveaways and that as well over the next week for the soups as well. So I'll just have a quick look at those questions, but yeah, um, other than that, I think I've covered everything and I've got some nice tasty soup to make. Uh, for serving sizes, this is roughly, serves, do I say, yes, yeah, seven. So when we've gone on the serving sizes, most of them are saying per cup. A cup mightn't sound like a lot. You, the carbs in that on most of these are so low. This one's three net carbs. Carbs are from the garlic and the cauliflower <laughs> and the sausage. Um, but yeah, it's... It, and sausage will, of course, depend on you. And you can just use mint balls if you want. Um, just make your own mint seasoned meatballs. 
Um, but yeah, some of them are, uh, say, per serve or per cup. Um, the ones are mainly that are per serve would be ones where you're just like quartering up because it's noodles and stuff, so it's a little bit harder. But with a lot of these, we decanted it into a jug and then did it into individual serves just to test it out. But I find a soup like that, like for me, that would actually be plenty and there would be more than seven serves in this soup. And like I can eat a lot of food but it's quite filling because there's quite a bit of fat in this if you bought the um if you bought that if you got the free superhero the fat um nutritional on that on there was wrong it's actually 40 grams of fat but that's taking again that just takes into account whatever sausage you use or bacon because it could be lean bacon whatever anyway okay any more questions before i go thank you i missed it i thought it was five est not daylight saving time aest but you can watch it back, Sandra. So um, you can just stop and pause it at any time and it will be on the wall. That's awesome. Just wanted to see on the test team. Oh yeah, Linda's on the test team. Marie Carter, I just love seeing you. Hi Marie, long time no see, no speaky. If you're ever in Newcastle, come and see us. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Marie's a long time friend. Um, do you ever use the blade cover? We have found with many recipes we just reverse blades and works fine, much easier. So Donna, yeah, okay, so I do have the blade cover. Um, with the slow cook book, I did use it in some, like if you're going to use say ham hock pieces, uh, I find it just keeps it away from the bone so that you get less splinters and stuff. As we know, anything that has bone in it, in a soup or a casserole, um, you know, old apricot chicken, whatever, you might end up getting a bone in something. Um, or a piece of bone. That's not my fault, that's not your fault, it's the way of the world, right? But um, in a thermomix, if you can hear something catching on the blades because there's not enough liquid, let's just say if the soup, if you re reduce the soup, say, down further, say the tomato bisque further and had the bacon bones in there, they're more than likely just like tripping over the blades anyway. So there might be some action in there. It just depends on what kind of bone you're going to use and what softens and what doesn't. And I find ham hock can soften. Um, so you could mince up some things and things like meatballs if you're going to put them in raw they can go on the top or you're going to make a bone broth you could stick it in there like you said Donna I don't feel it's necessary all the time um, for me it's just more about if you were using something delicate uh, if you're going to say do the seafood chowder with a softer fish or something like that you might want to stick in the blade cover to keep it away from the blades but, you know, I mean, some things still catch and like you can still hear, like if it's a bone, it might still grind up against the sides. I think it's a great um, addition for Thermomix to actually have added that. And I also have the Magimix, which is an amazing machine as well. That actually has a no blades action. So you can actually like turn it on and it doesn't rotate at all, which is fantastic. Um, so I use that one for the slow cook cookbook as well. But yeah, um, with any of these, I didn't need to put it in, so I didn't. Uh, we tried some things the saying putting in the simmering basket and putting in the bone or whatever, say if you're gonna make a fur or something like that, you'd put in all your um, spices and stuff like that into the simmering basket and then it just flavors it. But because we weren't doing a huge quantity of something, um, I found that, or we were, I either found that the simmering basket pushed the liquid up too high or it, the bone wasn't in the liquid. So you could use a blade cover. I have written, I think, in a couple of them that, you know, if you want to insert one, you can. Um, because, of course, we're not writing a recipe for thermomix as such. We're writing it for thermal cookers. Um, so, yeah, that's just an option. But, yeah, great. I think it's a great, um, great addition to have for certain things. But so far in all of the recipes I've done, I wouldn't say you would absolutely need it. I know some things we've tested in the past that I'd probably have to revisit that we kicked to the curb because there wasn't a blade cover back in the day. Um, that would probably be great for now, but I can't even think of what they were. But no, uh, in the answer to your question, no, you can pretty much put it in there. Just remember reverse. It's like when somebody says to me, this chopped up, and okay, was in you know reverse engagement. Yes, I'm like, yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, it, is, it just stirs it. It really is only just stirring. It. If you, and, but if you turn it on to say um, reverse two, yeah, you might chop something up. But when I do it for something that is bony in a lot of liquid, 
um, and I do tend to just stick it on stir, but if you saw this one, this one was actually on speed too because the meatballs really do hold together. They're not, um, yeah, it's just the binder that's in there, holds them together really well. Uh, maybe I need to retire my crusty loaf tin and use my USA tin. Yeah, Linda, well, I know you use a smaller one, but yeah, I've used that one for a couple of years now. Um, so I haven't bought any pans in a long, long time. Like I said, I've got so many, some that I haven't even used yet. Oh, I'll get there. Um, okay, well, I think, hang on, I think there's some questions here. Sorry, it doesn't come in order, so it's very hard for me to see. Uh, very lucky my oven has a setting for proving. Yeah, so um, Suzanne, yeah, the proving of your oven is like amazing. So I use it through winter because like when some people say they've got problems with rising of bread, um, I find that that's the best way because even today I just left them on the counter. We went for a walk, came back, did a couple of things, then came back into the kitchen. It was like an hour later and they were just sitting there. So I just turned it on, popped them in. That's why I said, they actually probably wrote proof for three hours today so definitely overproofed um but they still look fine and probably be a bit holy in the bread but i can live with that um but yeah great function so just have a look on your oven even if it doesn't have like proving icon just see if, if it goes to 40 degrees you can pop something in there i took a photo today i put it on my story so you'll see actually where i had like the uh ninja pan on the top and then i had the usa pan covered in the um silicon mat and I had the other one in a cake tin with another silicon mat sitting over the top of it. Um, let me see, pans online. First time watching. Maybe I need to retire. I'll just move this over here so you don't get the back of my head. Um, okay, well, I think I've gotten through. I'd love to be on your test team, Tracy. Then, if you've got your copy. and. For entry for the draw for the test team, it's everyone. So it's everyone that's got it from the beginning. And even if you're a founder and you got it for free, um, I shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> we have some people who originally joined our 365 back in 2018 um, as our original first 200 and they get a lot of stuff for free. Um, but yeah, they'll also go into the draw because uh, everybody that goes through it has an order number on it, so we can easily just track that. You don't need to give us any details. I'll just do, you know, a draw of you know, one to however many, and then I'll just pick out whatever number it is, so a random number generator. Okay, well, I think I've pretty much got this covered. I think that's just going back in time. So thanks for tuning in. If you tuned in, if you only just tuned in and you want to watch it later, it'll be on the wall. You can do that later. Um, don't forget, if you... Make any of the recipes. Uh, there will be an official thread on our Facebook group very shortly. That will be, you know, a um, cook the book, as we do. Um, but we'd like to see who's cooked it in what methods and stuff like that. All of the recipes are tested by our testers via the methods that are listed. So there's not a recipe there for a Thermomix, say, for instance, or thermal method that has not been tested in a Thermomix, Thermocook, um, We've got various models, Magimix. Um, I'm just trying to think, Intelli. We've got, uh, we've got a few different brands that people use. Um, so they've been tested in some, or in different brands. Some might be even only one brand, but um, so they're all tested, but yeah. So we'd like to see what you guys are choosing to cook them in. And there is no recipe in here that was given a method that I didn't think was fantastic. So that's always a good thing too, because like sometimes you might buy my books, I might go, I've given you this method, but I prefer that one. This one, I pretty much tested, I got the testers to test everything on the stove tops and stuff. I did some on the stove tops and we tested in here. We had um, three, four Thermomixes going and a Magimix. Um, and I also did one in the Instant Pot. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I always go on. And... Um, I will be back soon. I want to see people making their toasties. Oh, and did I even say, I want to see pizza ones. This was the one that I was going to do tonight. Pizza, little bits of pepperoni, diced jalapenos, diced olives, diced onion, maybe a little bit of tomato powder, cheese, garlic mm, in the pan. Yes, sounds great, doesn't it? Anyway, thanks again, and I will talk soon.